and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from the city in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think I've mentioned before at this Mass that I've had a nice long career designing computers, computer chips, and then I you know, came to Knoxville. In my early years as an engineer, I loved all the designing uh, that I did as a part of my job. Sometimes I would work excessive hours, especially when deadlines approached. And this is pretty common in a lot of industries. It's certainly common in the computer chip world. Engineers work long hours from time to time. I remember one weekend, oh, it happened to be a three-day weekend, where I worked from Friday morning all the way through Monday evening, no sleeping, no breaks, well, bathroom breaks, I suppose, but no pausing, just nonstop working there. And I really don't think I am physically capable of that kind of work at this stage of my life. Now, there was one project in particular in my career where I worked excessively long hours, month after month. Now, for some people, Working like this would be draining or burdensome, but it wasn't for me. I mean, I liked the work. Inventing a new machine, designing it, getting it manufactured, and seeing it operate, that gave me a great deal of joy. And so it was easy for me to spend all that time doing the work because I really loved the designing. However, one day, in the midst of all that, my wife called while I was at work, and she had a subtle message. Uh, the ordinary person might not pick up on the real meaning, you know, but I understood this woman, understood what she was saying. And all she said was, I now know why women divorce their husbands. <laughs> <clears throat> it didn't seem funny to me when I was hearing it. Um, you know, I hung up the phone and I reflected on what I'd been doing at work all those hours for all those months. And I thought about all those deadlines that kept getting extended time and time again, and we kept missing all those deadlines. I had made some trade-offs in my life, and my relationships suffered for it. 
After about a minute of thinking after that phone call, I left the office and headed home right there in the middle of the work day. And so that day, that was the end of my wildly out of balance life. Um, just to be, just for full disclosure, I'll tell you that I still struggle to maintain balance, but my wildly out of balance life was done that, that day. So before my wife's phone call, I had made decisions each day to work excessively. I made the decision to put my relationships on hold, work, 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 me, me, me. I bring up this idea of these daily decisions because I'm not the only one that can get their lives out of balance. It's deceptive really how the next hour, what we do with the rest of this day today, you know, how much it matters. What we choose to do with our time makes a big difference. So long after my wildly out of balance life had dissipated, I gave my relationships more of the time they deserved. My ministerial efforts allowed me to sit with some of those who were dying. Not many, uh, but a few. A few of these people had done as I had done and lived wildly out of balance lives. They made work their number one priority their whole lives. And for them, friends and family were not around not around to be with them, to take care of them in these last days of their lives. And predictably, their past co-workers were also not there with them either. In those moments, these people had time to reflect on their decisions. The little decisions made day after day until the little decisions turned into big decisions. They had time to think about the trade-offs they made. The cliche is true. I did not hear people say they were so happy they spent their whole lives working as they laid on their deathbed. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and die, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. In my wildly out of balance days, I was the grain of wheat that did not fall to the ground and did not die. Instead, I loved my life. It was all about me, me, me. Day by day, I made little decision after little decision to cling to the world and to live for myself. And day by day, the chance to live a fruitful life faded bit by bit. For too many people, sadly, they live a long life, but still at the end of their earthly life, they're still just a grain of wheat. Now today, I have some understanding of what it means to fall to the ground and die. And I understand how dying to myself can produce fruit. Once I started to let others into my life more, I started to do more listening and less dictating. Eventually, my listening led me to God led me to Jesus. And when I listened to God and acted on what I had received, these graces started flowing in my life in extraordinary ways. And not only did my relationships flourish away from work, but they also started growing at work. And instead of losing my career with my reduced hours, which I thought was going to happen, um, instead of losing that career, um, I had a, a great improvement in my career. And I just could not understand, like, how is it that working less hard on my part results in this promotion after promotion? 
That was so counterintuitive. Now, I share these personal things with you so that you can kind of get this small glimpse of these graces that God has given me and what makes it possible, you know, I think, for me to receive, to be open and receive these graces from God. And this comes into these little, these little daily decisions, the choice to listen to God and to act on what we hear. You know, that, that can take courage. Jesus speaks of his choice to fall to the ground and die. Oftentimes, when doing God's will, it is not a fun, happy, festival celebration. Instead, it looks like we lose everything that matters to us. So all this homily is leading up to these questions I just want to leave you with. I want to leave you with these questions. What if it's true? What if it's what if what Jesus says in the gospel reading today is true? What if loving this life of ours and making all the little daily decisions to cling to that life leads to our losing it? What if we turn our back on the glamorous promises of the world and instead choose to listen to what God would have us do? What would it cost to fall to the ground, to die to our selfishness, and live a godly life? What would it be like to live a life filled with God's graces, producing much fruit?